Welcome back to the Vandy Sports Podcast. I'm Joey Dwyer here after Vanderbilt's 70 to 65 loss at the hands of VCU at the Seagull Center. John Rothstein likes to say that a trip to the Seagull Center for a night game and a home game is more impactful than a trip to Europe. I don't know if it was quite that impactful for Vanderbilt tonight, but it was pretty dang close. Jerry Stackhouse, obviously the big story of tonight, his first ejection of the season and uh, probably my wildest night on the beat so far, Jerry Stackhouse. Gets ejected after Liam Robbins goes up for a dunk to cut the lead to three late in the second half. Does a little head tap, which uh, obviously, if you don't know, is a celebration uh, for dunking on someone. And Robbins did say that it was a celebration, but also thinks he got hit on the head on the play. Uh, Vanderbilt certainly thinks they have a case there with uh, that being called a technical foul. And then Stackhouse, once he heard that was called a technical foul, was absolutely livid, goes after the officials, gets a first technical, doesn't calm down, has to be held back, and uh, gets a second technical, is thrown out of the game, and Vanderbilt loses after that. Since the ejection, Vanderbilt goes on a 10-1 to run, has some fire under him, and we'll talk more about that later, but ultimately um, can't come back after Ace Baldwin hits four free throws and puts VCU up seven, and... Uh, Vanderbilt gets outscored 16 to 14 since the ejection. So a lot of fight shown from this Vanderbilt team tonight, but we have to talk more about Jerry Stackhouse and the whole situation because that's the elephant in the room. Not a big fan of talking about officiating. You're always going to make somebody angry. So I kind of try to play both sides. I'm never a guy who really wants to blame the officials for a loss, but Jerry Stackhouse certainly uh, would not agree with that premise tonight. He doesn't think the loss was self-inflicted and, uh, said at one point during the presser that he was tired of the officials' nonsense. They weren't good enough. Uh, he thought the game was lopsided all night and that the Robins play. It's kind of just a breaking point for him, and he couldn't take it anymore. He thought – he brought up a couple examples from the first half where Colin Smith got hit on the arm on a layup, and it wasn't called. Ezra uh, Manion went up for a layup, and they said – Stackhouse said that his wrist was grabbed. So – it was a game that had a ton of physicality. There was a ton of athletes on the court and a lot of plays with contact. Vanderbilt didn't think they got the right end of the stick there. And uh, I do think they have a case there. Do I think that it caused them to lose this game? Probably not. Vanderbilt had 19 turnovers. They got sped up. They took bad shots throughout almost the entirety of the first half, finished the first half with, what, 28 points and 13 turnovers, turned it over on nearly 40 percent of their possessions in the first half and I do think the officials did play a part in this game obviously Stackhouse would not be that livid if they didn't play any part in the game they gave uh, VCU um, I think VCU shot 30 something free throws 37 I believe and Vanderbilt shot 21 Um, but obviously there's more to that story than what Stackhouse is saying and more than just the numbers say VCU was better at getting to the rim tonight their offense was not beautiful by any stretch, but it did flow a little bit better. They got to the rim, created more contact around the rim. Liam Robbins got in foul trouble early, which really hindered Vanderbilt's ability to protect the rim. And uh, Vanderbilt certainly has a case uh, with the officiating thing, don't get me wrong, but also they could have executed much better. And Stackhouse did acknowledge that, uh, although he was not happy about the, fi- the officials, he did say they need to execute better. Jordan Wright gave them pretty much nothing tonight, had two rebounds. Um, zero points on zero for four shooting. Tyron Lawrence had five points on one for six from the field, 0 for two from three, and turned it over three times. Wright turned it over four times. Ezra Manion turned it over four times. Miles Studi turned it over four times. Leah Robbins had a turnover. Trey Thomas had two. This was a rough night for Vanderbilt in terms of the way they turned it over, um, just the way that Their offense flowed. They got sped up. That was the goal going in was to not get sped up, was to get by the press. They turned it over far too much tonight. They didn't get the looks they wanted. VCU will do that to you. That's their identity. Um, But Vanderbilt, if they wanted to win this game, had to be a little bit better offensively. They had to get more from their guards. Ezra Magnon led them with 12 points, had a nice night offensively, got to the rim a little bit. And Jerry Stackhouse talked in the post game about how he kind of wants Ezra to be a little more aggressive, it seems. Um, when he gets to the rim, he dumped it down a few times. And I think Stack, he wasn't fully clear, but I believe that he wanted him to go up there uh, rather than dump it down. And uh, they maybe maybe could have got some offensive momentum if he had gone up and 
laid it up there, but Ezra showed what he could be offensively tonight. He this is probably his best offensive game at Vanderbilt, six for seven from the field. Career high at Vanderbilt with 12 points. Really just got downhill that VCU hedged on a screen, he either shot through it or went around it and got to the rim for easy layups. Uh had that crafty finish around the rim and almost had that other one that went in. But a really nice night from him uh offensively and had an even assist to turnover ratio, which um, a lot of coaches wouldn't love, but against a VCU defense like this, I think is probably around acceptable. Um, he was their best guard tonight, though, and I think that's an issue when Jordan Wright isn't giving you any points. Tyron Lawrence, a guy who's had a really nice couple weeks, has five points. Um, there's an issue there beyond officiating, and I, I don't think that can get lost. I don't think this can be a game to where it's like Vanderbilt only lost because of officiating. They have a point that officiating – Probably didn't positively help them, but also you got to have better guard play. Liam Robbins was in foul trouble, mostly because of his own doing. Um, and he thinks that it seems based on what he said in the presser. But man, Miles Studi was the bright spot. Not much else from this team tonight. Liam Robbins had 14 in the second half, zero in the first half. Uh, I'm sure Vanderbilt's proud of how he got it going in the second half and kind of helped them push back into this game. Liam Robbins is really making his case for being the best player on this team. And I think I'm in the camp that he is. Uh, Jordan Wright's back injury obviously doesn't help his case there. Uh, I still think he's probably the go-get-you-a-bucket guy for Vanderbilt. But I'm much more inclined to say Lee Robbins is their best player right now. I'd like to see how healthy Wright can get before Wofford on Saturday. Um, but, yeah, Liam Robbins, really impressive second half by him. Uh, obviously didn't get as many blocks as normal, just had one because of the foul trouble and uh, obviously could have had a much better performance if he had stayed on the court. And that's the key for him. He's got to be able to play those big minutes. Uh, Lee Dort gave them okay minutes. Quentin Melora Brown had three points on one for four shooting uh, and grabbed five offensive rebounds. So both of them gave okay minutes, but Liam Robbins is the guy down there. He's the go-to guy in the post. He's probably Vanderbilt's best offensive player in the last two weeks and maybe moving forward as well. So they need to get more from him. Uh, and they need him to stay on the court. I don't think they can get much more from him when he's on the court, 14 second half points, but he's got to stay on the court and stay out of foul trouble, and I think that might be an issue in SEC play. Uh, but that's why they have that rotation of three bigs, and I think that's really important. A lot of teams don't have that, and uh, when a guy like Robbins gets in foul trouble, they're really in trouble. And Melora Brown, I think we're still waiting on a big game from him or a game where he really impresses you, but seven rebounds tonight. Shows that he can give effective minutes once we get to SEC play. Um, just not a great night for Vanderbilt in general. The frustration boiled over. The one bright spot was Miles Studi and Lee Robbins' second half, I presume. And maybe Ezra's uh, ability to get downhill and kind of show what he can be as a scorer. Uh, but Studi was 7 for 13 from the field, 6 of 9 from beyond the arc, 20 points. And uh, Jerry Stackhouse also liked what he had to say. I feel like I'm quoting him tonight a lot, but – his presser and him is the biggest story of the night. So I uh, want to make this about him. Uh, he did say we could blame him for the loss, not to blame his guys. Uh, so I won't, won't fully do that because I think his team could have been a lot better. But um, Miles Studi, I think, was the bright spot. Um, and he wants other guys to step up as well. He said Wright needs to step up. He said Lawrence needs to step up, and they have a much better chance of winning if those guys do. He's correct on that. Those are their guys in the backcourt. And we've seen how good the offense can be when they have both of them going or even have one of them going. Uh, I think their ceiling is immensely higher if one of them is the primary shot taker rather than Ezra. And uh, this team has a higher ceiling if those guys are on. And Liam Robbins is staying on the floor, and those things didn't happen a whole lot tonight. Robbins, you saw how great he can be, um, like we've already said. But this team has a lot of ways to go. But the fact that they were within this game – the fact that they were in this game with everything that happened and the lack of production they got from their backcourt, really impressive um, considering the team they were playing. And VCU is certainly not perfect offensively, um, but there's a team that really challenges Vanderbilt. And I think does a better job of what Vanderbilt wants to do defensively. Um, probably They probably are a little more aggressive than Vanderbilt wants to be, but just really got teams out of their element. And I think that's what Vanderbilt ultimately wants to do. Couldn't do that tonight to VCU. Uh, VCU did have, did have a lot of turnovers, but still had 70 points. Ace Baldwin coming back, 
is a huge thing for this VCU team. And uh, I don't think Vanderbilt loses this game if Ace Baldwin doesn't play. He was incredible tonight. And uh, Vanderbilt did not really think he was going to play, it seemed. Uh, I don't think anyone really said that, but it seemed that the momentum was trending towards him not playing, and then he comes out and scores, I believe, 28 points. So big night for Ace Baldwin, and he was kind of the killer of Vanderbilt tonight as Vanderbilt moves to three and four. Um, they do have some good signs, though. Miles Studi is really turning it on. We've seen a big performance from all their guys. Even in a rough night, Liam Robbins has 14 points, uh, hits six for seven from the free throw line. They finished with 75% shooting from the line, which is a lot better than it was earlier on. Um, and just the fight they showed, I think, is something that they can take. Moving forward, Stackhouse said in the presser that that's who this team is. They're a team full of tough guys who know what to do, know how to execute, and just have to do it. And we saw they did it after the ejection. And we saw kind of the fire they came out with after the ejection. And uh, I think that was really important for this team to kind of show, hey, we're not going to back down after that. Uh, we're going to play for our coach. And uh, we're going to play hard and kind of show our identity. And they did that tonight. Just fell a little bit short. And uh, we'll look to not fall short on Saturday against Wofford in a game where hopefully for Vanderbilt, uh, the officials – are more on their side, at least in their heads. So uh tough loss for Vanderbilt tonight. Just a frustrating game for the Commodores with a lot going wrong and just a lot happening in general. Um, didn't quite do the little things well enough tonight. And also uh, Vanderbilt didn't think that they had the officials on their side. So a lot to unpack in this one. I try to do my best, but so much going on. Uh, also, if I didn't mention Jordan Wright's back injury, uh, Stackhouse did say that that was still lingering. Uh, Paul Lewis was the only inactive tonight. He has a concussion uh, and flu-like symptoms, uh, kind of both going on at the same time, had the concussion a while back, uh, and that's obviously a discouraging sign. But everyone else came back tonight. Trey Thomas came back tonight, hit a big shot, also missed a big shot, um, but provides some stability in that backcourt. I don't really know where they would be without him coming in and helping them break the press. Only had one assist, but... Turned it over twice. I think it was really valuable to have another ball handle on the court there. And I think it would have been even more valuable if Lewis could have came in and give, gave him minutes today. So just so much to unpack tonight. Um, hopefully I did a decent job with it. But I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, hopefully the Wofford post game is a little less chaotic or not. That was pretty fun to kind of unpack everything. Big night for Vanderbilt Hoops. Just came up a little bit short. Uh, in a 70 to 65 loss at the Siegel Center in a night that wasn't quite as life changing as a 10 day trip to Europe, but was pretty dang close. Thank you guys for watching. God bless and peace.